Hey y'all, my name is Owen Knight. I'm Associate Director of Admission here at Tulane. Thank you for taking some time out of your day to watch our virtual information session. I'm actually gonna be giving the exact same presentation I do if you had come to campus, so you're gonna get the exact same information. We've got a virtual tour set up for you as well, so you can get everything you need to know from the comfort of your own home. Uh, so I've been here at Tulane for a decade. I went here for undergrad, graduated in 2014, and I'm now in my sixth cycle as an admission counselor, and I love working with families like you as you go through this process. I think a reason I enjoy working through students as you navigate the college search is because I hated applying to college. It's a very stressful time. I totally get what you're going through. There's a lot of moving parts, a lot of stress, a lot of just a lot of things happening, and I totally empathize with that. I just remember going on a college uh, road trip with my family the summer before my senior year. We decided to look at seven schools in about a week, and it was the worst week of my life. You know, you go to these things, and if you're on a campus, they all feel the same. They all start blending together, and I just remember being very uh, removed from the process. And uh, I always joke with my mom, just thinking back to her college spreadsheet. So the Excel sheet with all the average class size, the student-faculty ratio, all of those data points you can look up at home, you know, I'm not going to bore you with all that stuff. You're already on your computer. I'm not going to make you recite that. Uh, you can do that research on your own. But here, I'm really trying to paint the picture of what it's like to spend four years here at Tulane University. Uh, as you can see, our campus is absolutely gorgeous. I love living here in New Orleans, and I think it's a great fit for a lot of different types of students. So we're going to walk through kind of that, that macro level of what it's like to actually live here for four years, because I firmly believe that the four years you spend in college, those are some of the most formative years of your life. 18 to 22, that's a great time to learn, learn about new things, meet new people, expand your worldview, and Tulane is a fantastic place to do that. Uh, so the way we're going to do that, we're going to talk about three main things. We're going to do academics, we're going to do student life, and then New Orleans. Uh, again, I think it is about that big picture and trying to picture your life here on campus, here in New Orleans, and uh, talking about all those three things are important because ultimately the college search is not only about finding the highest ranked engineering program. You really want to assess like, can I be happy at this school? And I, I honestly think Tulane is that type of place for a lot of different people. So starting with academics, Tulane is classified as a medium-sized major research university. There's about three or four hundred universities in the states classified as a major research university, and they usually get that distinction for two main reasons. Number one is the research capability. Number two is having a wide variety of courses or a broad uh, breadth of academic options. So on the research side, we've got that covered. We're classified as a tier one institution by the Carnegie Foundation. That puts us in the top 2% of universities nationally. Uh, so we've got those high level research activities that you might be looking for, working with a professor in a lab, uh, getting funding to do independent research, traveling to speak at a conference, writing a scholarly article, things like that. In terms of the academic offerings, uh, on our website, you can see all the majors and minors we offer at Tulane. We have over 75 of them, and they are spread across five different undergraduate colleges. Uh, the wonderful thing about Tulane is that you are admitted into all five schools when you are admitted into the university. So we've got the A.B. Freeman School of Business, which is where I studied. The next largest is the School of Science and Engineering then the School of Liberal Arts, the School of Public Health, and then the School of Architecture. So those make up the university. But like I said, when you get into Tulane, you are into all five of them. So if you put neuroscience on your application and you later want to switch to finance or dance or public health, you can do that without jumping through a lot of hoops. It's incredibly easy. I ended up personally switching my major twice when I came to Tulane. I came in as an undecided business student. I thought I wanted to do business and become a businessman and make business business money one day. Uh, but halfway through freshman year, I had my big epiphany. I thought back to high school. One of my role models at my high school was my football coach. He was also my calculus teacher. Shout out to Mr. Kuhn. Uh, great guy. His son was on the football team with me, and he just loves being at school. So halfway through freshman year, I was like, you know what? That's what I want to do. I want to become a teacher. I started doing the teacher certification program got to work in a local middle school for the spring to do my service learning, uh, which I'll get to later. And then uh, fall of sophomore year, I ended up taking less lesson planning, uh, which is when I decided I did not want to be a teacher. Uh, so I ended up switching back into the business school, declaring my two majors in marketing and management, used that year in the teacher program to get a psychology minor. So I was still able to graduate on time in four years with two majors and a minor. So it is very user friendly. Tulane is not the type of place that is going to punish you for having an idea, punish you for for not knowing what it is you want to do. You know, heaven forbid that you don't know what you want to do with the rest of your life when you're 18 years old. That is totally fine. Tulane is the type of place that encourages that exploration, wants you to try new things, and allows you that latitude to experiment and work through our core curriculum in a way that is fun and interesting for you. So it is very user-friendly and allows you to just kind of find your passions.
So the thing about academic flexibility and research, those things are incredible, but I can't sit here and pretend that we're any different from any other major research university. You can find this at a lot of different schools. What is different about Tulane compared to a lot of these other major research institutions with 70 majors, research capabilities, D1 athletics, we are much smaller than most of these schools. We are just around 7,800 undergraduate students, so you're able to have a much more personalized and intimate academic experience. Our average class size is only 23 students. We have an eight to one student to faculty ratio. So you're in this ac academic environment that if you were coming from a private high school is something that you're used to, or if you're like me and you went to a public high school, you might be ready for. I think it's incredible because again, you've got the resources of a big institution, the opportunities of a big institution, but you're not competing with thousands and thousands and thousands of people to get that spot in the lab or to get the class you want with the amazing professor. You have so much more access here at a medium-sized school and I think it helps uh, you as a student really lean into your academics and build great relationships with your professors, but then socially I think it's an incredible size as well, which leads me into the next thing, which is just student life. I think our size is really perfect from that perspective because it's never so small that you get sick of everyone. You know, it doesn't feel like high school. You don't know the drama surrounding everybody. The social dynamics work very differently from high school. It's not necessarily as clicky and you can't be defined by the one thing that you do, but it is big enough that you know, you're never bored. You're always making new friends and it doesn't feel like suffocating in that sense. Uh, I really enjoyed that, that, you know, senior year, you're still making new friends, but when you need to take a random elective to fulfill a graduation requirement, you're gonna have friends in that class as well. Uh, if you are ever on campus and you're walking around, you're gonna see so many people that you know, and it's just a really strong sense of community here at Tulane. And the people here, I think, are incredible. They're coming from all corners of the country, all corners of the world, and it creates a very eclectic group of people here on our campus. Uh, we get students from all 50 states and over 60 different foreign countries and it creates a really nice cross-section of the country and of the world that I think teaches you a lot. Uh, an example that I always talk about uh, in person and, and a lot is just talking about my hometown. Uh, so I grew up in a DC suburb, it's called Bethesda, Maryland. Bethesda is a great place to grow up, but it's not the most representative place in the world. You know, it's not hugely diverse, uh, not a whole lot of economic diversity, and one area that I noticed in high school was that it is not very uh, diverse in terms of politics or thought. Uh, we did a mock election for the bush Kerry election in school, and I will never forget, at the end of the day, they read the, the announcements over the PA, and 98% uh, of our school, unsurprisingly, voted for John Kerry, the Democratic nominee, and then uh, to my surprise, the other 2% of the vote went to Ralph Nader, the independent. Uh, nobody at my school voted for George Bush. So you can imagine what any discussion at my school was like surrounding any social issue, just everybody agreeing all the time. And I don't necessarily care what side of a argument you are on. If you're only around people that agree with you all the time, I don't necessarily think that's the best thing for you to do, especially when you're in college and you're in that amazing growth period. So for me, it was amazing coming to Tulane and having classmates and fraternity brothers and friends who had gone to Catholic schools in Mississippi, who had gone to hippie schools in California, who had gone to big public schools in Texas and Illinois, boarding schools in New England, and really, a, again, a cross-section of the country. I think it teaches you a lot about people. I think it opens your mind a little bit, and I think it's a really amazing thing to consider. In terms of that diversity, the geographic spread, all of that, that, that is something that Tulane has always been good at. But quite frankly, Tulane is not the most diverse place in the world. And uh, it's something that we've worked on improving over the past few years and has uh, shifted a lot since I was at Tulane. Uh, my class, class of 2014 at Tulane, I believe was around 15 or 14 percent students of color. The class that just came in this year, uh, they were 26 percent students of color and then uh, another 4 percent international students. So we have seen that growth in terms of underrepresented populations. And that that's something that I think is really important to a lot of people these days. So if that's important to you, I do want to be honest and say Tulane isn't necessarily the most diverse campus it's, uh, you're going to be looking at, but it's a very inclusive one. I had an amazing experience here, and even though I was a person of color at a predominantly white institution, I always felt supported and open, and the people here are really uh, open to getting to know you and listening and fostering an environment that is supportive. Uh, it's been really cool to see the growth. I mentioned the numerical change, but just walking around campus, you see so much more, and just having people coming from different backgrounds, different life experiences, I think only help you as an individual grow in this time. So in terms of commonalities amongst the student body, I think everybody at Tulane is very present and is very involved and they want to be here. The average student is over 900 miles away from home. So nobody is just like making this decision just, you know, very, uh, 
quickly to come to Tulane. It's not an easy choice. Even if you're watching this video from, you know, five miles away from here, you know, most of your friends might be going to LSU. It is a hard decision to come to Tulane. So I think when people get here, they are very active in their life. They aren't just going to sit on the sidelines and let life happen to them. They're really going to dig in and get involved. And that involvement, that is a huge part of the culture here at Tulane. Feels like everybody's doing three, four, five different clubs. And it's just a really like active and bustling and fun place to be. Uh, one thing that a lot of students are passionate about is service learning, community service, getting engaged. And I like that here at Tulane, the service engagement, the service requirement does not feel like a requirement. Yes, it's built into the curriculum. It's amazing because we were the first major university to do that. But Tulane provides you opportunities to do service in a way that is meaningful to you and impactful to you. And I think compared to my high school experience where it was just filling out a sheet and checking off hours and like doing things just because they were easy. Uh, I think Tulane building relationships with organizations in the city and kind of steering you to things that you will find interesting allow you to really double down and buy in. Uh, so you've got your classic examples where you're working with your Tides class or you find an organization that's just a little bit more of an extracurricular. Uh, one of our non-academic uh, popular clubs right now is Two Step, which is our service dog training and education program. We have about 11 really adorable puppies being raised to be service dogs here on campus right now. Uh, and highly recommend you check them out on Instagram. It is almost too cute to handle. And that was started by a student just because he had heard about a program at another university, wanted to bring it here. So for a more academic example, I like thinking back to one of my buddies at Tulane. His name was Justin. He was a biomedical engineering major. And in his fourth year, his senior year, he was able to take the design course. This is a course where they worked with a local nonprofit to design a medical device. And he got partnered with the Gleason House. Uh, so the Gleason House was founded by Steve Gleason. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Steve Gleason is a huge deal in New Orleans. He played football for the Saints, and he is known for making one of the most famous plays in Saints history, and honestly, in New Orleans history. Uh, fall of 2005, Hurricane, Hurricane Katrina happened. Uh, you know, you can read all about that. Many of you know about it already. Very low on the list of side effects of Katrina was that the Saints didn't play a home game that year. Inconsequential in the grand scheme of things, but for this story, uh, we were gone for a year, came back fall of 2006. We're playing the Atlanta Falcons, who we despise with all of our hearts. And uh, in the first quarter, uh, Steve Gleason blocks a punt, and uh, we return it for a touchdown. It was the first touchdown scored since Katrina at home, and it was just really an incredible moment. And I highly recommend you go to YouTube, find your tab, look at, uh, pull it up, because it, it's, it'll give you chills, even if you're not even a sports fan. It's, it's a huge moment, and Steve Gleason is extremely famous for making that play. He's a hero in this city. And very sadly, after he retired, he was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease with ALS, um, but fortunately he has given back to the community quite a bit. So he's opened this home uh, for folks here in New Orleans with the disease as well. And Justin and his biomedical engineering group partnered with the group and they shadowed at the home for a couple weeks and they got to know the patients and tried to identify a problem that they could solve. And they found that a lot of these patients were having daily annoyances with the tubing for their oxygen tanks. You know, it was getting tangled and hard to manage. And so they developed the smart coil, this coiling system for the patients that would attach to the tubing for their tanks and just made their day to day a lot less annoying. And uh, they developed the product here on campus, they printed it in the makerspace, and they actually ended up applying for a patent for it as well. And that is an example of just how powerful and individualized the service learning can be. You know, that example is so much more important than me just like picking up garbage by the road by my high school. You know, you're working one on one with another human being, you're identifying a problem that they have, then you are using the resources available to you at school to solve that problem. And to me, that's incredible. And I think that really allows students to push the two lane bubble, to get out in the community, to get to know people, and to, to see how they can make an impact through things that they are actually interested in. And I think that's why students buy in so much. Um, I always hesitate to point at the rankings, but I'm always going to mention them if they make Tulane look good. And uh, the Princeton Review has named us the number one school in the country for service-minded students like three of the past four years. I forget the exact figure, but it's been three or four times recently. And uh, I firmly believe that that is accurate because our students are really buying into it and finding organizations that they are passionate about. So service is, a, a, again, a great way to push that two-lane bubble, to get out into the city. And New Orleans is just, it's such an amazing place to live. I've lived here for a decade, and I honestly feel sometimes that, like, I barely know anything. There's so much history here, so many amazing neighborhoods, so many amazing restaurants, music venues. Like, there's so much to do here, and it's such a vibrant and fun place to live. And uh, what I love about our campus in the relation to New Orleans is, 
you know, we're not on Bourbon Street right now, as you can see. We are separate enough from that that you are able to have this campus community, this student-centric experience. But when you get bored of that, you've got one of the most interesting cities in the entire world 10 minutes away. Uh, so you've got that nice dichotomy of having a beautiful campus and having that college neighborhood and having those places to go that are free of tourists. But when you get bored of that, you are not in the middle of nowhere. So I think it's the perfect balance. And New Orleans, like my favorite stat about New Orleans, we have over 365 festivals per year in South Louisiana. So we're averaging over a festival per day. I highly recommend you go start, do some Googling, but it is one of the most just like, again, vibrant places to be. Throughout the fall we have a ton of food festivals you know you've got po boy fest you have fried chicken fest mac and cheese fest uh, it's just a really really dangerous time for students because you can gain a lot of weight when you first get to Tulane but it's really worth it uh, you move on to the all the music festivals you have voodoo music and arts fest over Halloween buku music fest uh, in the spring New Orleans jazz fest uh, crawfest here on our campus which is our student run music festival with 20,000 pounds of crawfish you've got all these opportunities to see like world-class artists right here in New Orleans then you have all the weird ones too. Uh, my personal favorite is the running of the bulls, which is a recreation of the bull run that they do in Spain. You go and you wake up, you put on an entirely white outfit, you get a red sash and a red, you know, handkerchief or whatever, and everyone lines up at the con convention center down by Harris Casino, and uh, you all line up. And typically it's about 10,000 people. So it's just like a ton of people there and uh, they blow this giant horn and you run for a mile around downtown and then afterwards there's a block party and music and stuff. But here it's a lot safer than it is in Spain because the bulls are actually roller derby girls. Uh, so there are these roller derby athletes from all over the country who fly down to New Orleans with the direct purpose of just beating the heck out of us with a wiffle ball bat. And it's ridiculous. They dress up in costumes and they have horns on their helmets and they have these big red bats and they will just beat you. And it's, it's violent and it's scary and it'll strike fear into your heart. And it's one of the most fun and ridiculous days because you're just running around with 10,000 people and at times you're like, how is this a thing? Like, what kind of person does this? But in New Orleans, 10,000 people do. You know, this is not happening in Bethesda, Maryland. This is not happening anywhere else. It takes a very strange and fun-loving population of people to have that kind of thing and to have that kind of turnout, but that's just the vibe here in New Orleans. Uh, it bums me out sometimes that people only think of us as a party city. You know, they only think about Bourbon Street and Mardi Gras. You know, there's just so much love for life in this city. You quickly realize when you're here, it's part of the culture, it's part of the character, and it's so much more than just drinking and partying. And that's something that I realized when I came to Tulane is that being social and drinking and partying are not the exact same thing at all. You can be social here in New Orleans without having to drink, and it makes your student life so much more balanced and manageable. You know, you aren't necessarily forced to just choose between tailgates and frat parties. You have live music you can see seven nights a week. You have all the festivals. You have amazing museums and art galleries, and you can experience all that and still be able to take your test the following Monday. Uh, I always talk with students about how there's not that much FOMO here because it's not like if you have to stay in all weekend, you're missing the one fun thing for the semester. You have something coming up around the corner at all times, and I think that that takes away a lot of the peer pressure and the social pressure and uh, if you choose not to engage with that that is totally fine you can still have a very vibrant and fulfilling social life even if you choose not to partake in things like that and uh, it really is just such an amazing place to be, such a fun place to be, but at the same time, there's been a lot of growth in New Orleans over the past few years as well. We've been named one of the best cities for startup companies. We've seen a huge boom with the, uh, the film industry. A lot of Fortune 500 companies have offices down here. So you have those opportunities to build your pre-professional network, to get involved with internships, to make connections, and if you so choose, to stay here after you graduate. So if you do choose to stay in New Orleans, there are a lot of pre professional opportunities for you, but if you wanna try something new, you wanna go back home, that is totally okay. I totally understand that. And a great thing about coming to Tulane is that you've got that networking ability, that ability to get your foot in the door somewhere all across the country. We get students from all 50 states, so at the same time, students go all over when they graduate. So you can work in Los Angeles in the entertainment industry. You can go work on Wall Street. You can get involved in oil and gas, healthcare. You know, Tulane is not just known for one particular major or one of our five schools. Some of our strengths are spread across the entire board, like our Latin American Studies program is one of the strongest in the country. Neuroscience got ranked 12th, architecture 14th. Our finance program is incredible. Pre-med, pre-law, you know, you don't get one type of successful student that comes to Tulane. So that your network is gonna be so diverse and broad and just spread out everywhere. It really creates a lot of opportunities for you when you're ready to start looking for those internships and those jobs. 
So to wrap it all up, the things I've talked about individually are not particularly unique on their own. You can go to college in an amazing city. I will say New Orleans is the best city in the country, but there are other great cities you can go to college. You can find diverse, involved, engaged students at many, many places, and you can get a good degree at like thousands of places. But I think the thing about Tulane is that when you take a step back and you think about that big picture we were talking about, that four year macro level life experience you'll be having, I think the thing about Tulane is that it's very versatile. It appeals to a lot of different types of students. So that when you're here, you're gonna be meeting people from all over the country who have different interests, who have different aspirations, and then they go off and do amazing things around the country and around the world. So the last personal story I'm gonna tell, I tell it at the end of all my presentations, is about my sophomore year suite. There were eight of us, and the eight of us were from seven different states, and we all are now doing very different things. Uh, my roommate, Chris, was from Dallas. He studied public health, and he also played the drums in like three different bands, so we'd go to all these dive bars and check out his shows. He has since gotten another degree, and now is living out of Annapolis, Maryland, doing computer networking, I believe. Uh, next to us, we had Landon from Jackson, Louisiana, who stayed for five years and got a master's in neuroscience. He ended up going to medical school at Tufts, and he's about to finish. His roommate, Stephen, from Memphis, studied finance, and he is now working for JP Morgan out of their office in Dallas. Uh, we had diagonally from them, Benny from Connecticut, who studied finance and business management. He moved out to LA after he graduated working in the entertainment industry. He has since moved back to Manhattan. His roommate, Adam, studied political science, uh, went to South Carolina after he graduated to work on the governor's campaign there. He then went to UCLA's law school, and he has also moved back to the East Coast. He's an attorney now. And then the final room, we had Joe from New Jersey, who studied business management and pre-med. He ran a very successful food truck here in New Orleans for a couple years, he came back, started working in the admissions office again. We had interned together, uh, which was very detrimental to the story, but uh, he has now moved on and he's now at Lucid here in New Orleans, which is one of those big startup companies we were talking about. And then finally, his roommate, Casey, was from Connecticut. Casey studied linguistics and Arabic. He went abroad to Jordan for a semester. He then graduated and got a Fulbright scholarship and taught in Turkey for a year. And then he ended up working in DC doing like counterterrorism type stuff. And now he's getting a master's at Georgetown. And those are the jabronis that I lived with my sophomore year of college. You know, this was not some master plan I cooked up at the time. This is just how it is here. Your friends are gonna be some of the smartest people you will ever meet. They're gonna have all these interesting interests. And if you couldn't tell, I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I absolutely loved going to school here. So if any of that resonated with you, here's just a quick couple tips about the application process, little information for you. You can poke around on the website too, but just a couple things to highlight. Uh, there are three different ways to apply to Tulane. We have early action, we have binding early decision, and then we have regular decision. Honestly, I strongly encourage you to do one of the two early options. That is where we get most of our students. Early action is not binding, and you'll hear back by uh, mid-December, early January. Early decision is binding, so only do that if you're like 10,000% sure Tulane is your number one choice and you've talked about the financial aspect with your family. Regardless of how you apply, we are reading you the same way. We do what's called holistic admission. You've probably heard that a bajillion times by now, but that means we are looking at more than just your grades and your test scores. Yes, your grades and your test scores are important. We're looking at your transcript. We're looking at your scores. We're looking at the rigor on your transcript. Did you challenge yourself at your high school? But then from there, we're looking at if you're a good fit for our community. We're looking at your resume. You know, are you involved at school? What kind of things do you do? One tip for you, I don't expect all of you to be the captain of every sports team and have performed at Carnegie Hall and do cancer research and have a job and take care of your grandma. You don't need to do a million different things. It's okay to have a small focused resume. You don't need a million things going around there. And it's okay to just be you. That's my biggest advice. Just do the things that make you happy. But we're trying to get a sense of who you are and then build a class that is representative of a lot of different types of people. Uh, so your resume is important, your essays are important, your personal statement and your optional statement. Your optional statement also leads me into engagement and demonstrated interest. That is very important in our process as well. Demonstrated interest, we, we try not to say that as much anymore as we try to say engagement because it's not just about checking the box. Uh, I literally once had someone walk up to me at a college fair and say, hello, I'm here to demonstrate my interest. That is not what we're looking for. We're looking at you actually trying to help us answer the question of, if we let you in, would you maybe come here? And uh, we want that to be as a high, high probability as possible. So doing what you can, if we come to your high school, come see us. If we do an info session in your town or a town over, try to come to that. Visit campus if you can, but if you can't, 
that's okay. That's not the only way to show interest. We're trying to see, again, we're human beings. We want to answer that question of would you maybe come to school here? So writing the optional statement, emailing with us, just being engaged in the process is really important because we know you have a lot of options out there. It's very easy to apply to a lot of schools and we're just trying to do our homework and figure out if this is somewhere that you want to be. So once all that gets wrapped up, when we're reviewing your application, you're automatically considered for merit aid. That goes all the way up to $30,000 a year. You can then also apply for need-based aid with the FAFSA and the CSS profile. We do need both of those. Uh, at the end of the day, over three quarters of our students get money to attend Tulane. So even though our sticker price, our total price is up there, it can become a lot more affordable than it looks at first. Uh, so thank you for your time. I guess now you can click around and find the virtual tour, see our beautiful campus. I appreciate you listening, and uh, hopefully you can make it down sometime. But if not, uh, hopefully this resource was helpful for you. So have a great day, and roll wave.